All right, we are getting ready to bring you our Class 1A and Class 2A state rankings, along with our NUIC Power 5. Obviously, to highlight our NUIC Power 5, we saw some, we saw a big game yeah. in there with uh, EPC and Dakota last week. EPC coming out with that 21 to 10 win um, as um, Dakota had a 10 nothing lead before they um, eventually lost. lost. Yeah. Uh, see if that shakes up the power five a little bit here. Uh, we'll find out soon. Yeah, we definitely should. I mean, obviously we had some big games across um, class one A and two A, but nothing really changed as far as the panel went. Um, a lot of teams that we had listed last week in our top tens across both one A and two A were winners this week, especially Nashville beating uh, going in there. Yeah, Nashville with the big win over Ducoin, uh, 29 to 20. That was a big win for them for sure. Ducoin ranked uh, number 10 in Class 3A, right. um, and Nashville obviously uh, being ranked in Class 2A or getting votes anyway. Uh, but I mean, we we had them ranked in our Class 2A panel. I'm glad the AP can finally jump on board there. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, another big one, too, was uh, Salt Fork and Bismarck Henning. Bismarck Henning won that game 23-21. I know Bismarck Henning is rated a little bit higher in the Class 2A poll than where we have them. And uh, Salt Fork was receiving votes. Uh, good game there overall. Uh, it will set up a big matchup for Salt Fork this week as they get ready to play Fithy and Oakwood. And the comments are definitely – they're they're good. They're, they're they're good enough to give Salt Fork a game. They kind of underperformed at the beginning of the year, so they're not going to make the playoffs. Um, but they can definitely change some of the seeding for what Salt Fork has going yeah. on there, That's right. um, which is a good thing. Uh, and and that seems to be a pretty good uh, rivalry there too uh, for the conference, uh, which is the Vermilion Valley. If you forgot back home, but uh, anyhow. Um, obviously one of the big things that we are looking at, uh, Class 2A is definitely going to be a loaded class. Yeah. Um, you've split it up north and south, and it is just crazy when you take a look at the teams in 2A north. You're looking at GCMS, you're looking at Orion, you're looking at Sterling Newman, um, Chicago Hope is in there. Tri Valley is a team that we're accustomed to seeing in the past. I just don't expect a lot out of them this year. But then you go on to the bottom side and you're looking at St. Teresa, Marola Forsyth, potentially Tuscola, Carthage Illini West. Uh, this definitely has, oh, Athens is in there. Pleasant Plains, who was in 3A last year, they're in there. Yeah. <laughs> so you got you got a lot. Sitting in Class 2A to make a great playoff bracket. Jesus, did I see a Knoxville 51 playoff points in the North? Yeah, yeah, you did. Um, Knoxville's got a lot of playoff so, points. So uh, whoever there. draws them, that might be a, uh, well, a fun uh, matchup. Well, and here you go. So here's one of the things with Knoxville. If you remember correctly, at the beginning of the year, Knoxville was ranked in the AP poll. They were tied at number five. And they're going to enter the playoffs at 5-4. and four. But, you know, some of that comes from their cross-conference games. Newman, potentially? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That would yep. be an interesting game. I still think Newman's would yeah. roll in that one. I, I mean, you take a look at some of Knoxville. Trying to build it up a little there bit. There you battle, go. But, yeah. <laughs> but, no, 51 playoff points. I mean, that's it, a good that, schedule. That, it's a great schedule. I mean, and honestly, you look at their schedule. They got three games, I believe, that were uh, that all three teams are going to finish 9-0. and all. So, yeah, Knoxville is definitely a team that they're not going to make much Damage, but they're a team not to overlook by any stretch of the imagination. Um, as far as getting to a potential uh, breakdown, you know, GCMS Barrow Forsyth is there for the taking. I see GCMS going north. So to get to that potential opportunity for a rematch, I think it's very high. Yep. All right, our Class 1A state rankings. At number one, I have Aurora Christian. 
At number two is Lena Wenzel. And like I said, I think the winner of that those two is definitely who we're going to see in the uh, state title game, hoisting the trophy. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, number three, I have Athens, although I right now I anticipate Athens going to Class 2A. At number four, I have Tuscola. Those Them two I also see moving into Class 2A. Number five is Ottawa Marquette. At number six, I have Princeville. Number seven, I have Argento Oriana. At number eight are the Milledgeville Missiles. Number nine, Forreston. And rounding out my top ten, moving into my top ten for the first time all year, are the Camp Point Central Panthers. Uh, they've had a heck of a season. They're 7-1 right now. And then rounding out my top 15, as far as the NUIC is concerned, with their loss, I dropped to I dropped Dakota to number 13. For old Kyle, uh, my top 10 and honorable mention as follows. Number one, Aurora Christian, followed by two, Lena Winslow. Number three would be Athens, followed by four, Tuscola. We should be getting rid of them, like you said. Five would be Otto Marquette, followed by six, Princeville. Argenta at seven, Milledgeville at eight, Forrest at nine. Like you, can't point at 10, and I dropped Dakota down to 11. All right, so I, yeah. yes, you did. So I, <laughs> that brings us to our Class 1A panel. At number one, we have the Eagles of Aurora Christian and the uh, Speed Camp there with the BBs. They are number one with their 60 and nothing win over River Grove. Garen gets them to 5-3. and three. That 5-3 and three mark is going to solidify them into the playoffs regardless of what happens in Week 9. At number two is Lena Winslow. They are seven and one as they beat Dupac forty-one to twenty-two. And number three, we have Athens. We've already said we expect them to be in Class Two A. I don't have any reason why they won't be in Class Two A, but they're still in our one A poll this week. They are six and two as they beat Vernon North Mac thirty-seven to fourteen. Number four, same story, Tuscola. Although they really are on the bubble right now as far as one A two A, I still see them going to two A. Unless something catastrophic happens, they are seven and one, and after they beat Shelbyville forty-nine to nothing. Uh, number five is Ottawa Marquette. They are eight and zero after they beat Rockford Christian thirty-one to nothing. Coming at number six, we have Princeville. They are eight and zero after they beat Mercer County thirty-five to seven, and Mercer County was ranked in our Class Two A poll at number eleven prior to last week. Uh, Argento Oriana comes in at number seven. The Bombers move to eight. No, after they beat Arthur Lovington at Wood Hammond, or otherwise known as Allah, fifty to twenty-one. <laughs> at number eight, we have Milledgeville. They are eight no after they beat River Ridge, fifty-four to fourteen. Don't worry, I got this. At number nine, we have Forest, <laughs> as they are six and two. They beat West Carroll 48 to 6. <laughs> and rounding out our top 10 is Camp Point Central for the first time this year. They are 7 and 1 after they beat Greenfield Northwestern 42 to 6. As far as the NUIC in the top 10, our panel vote has Dakota at number 12 at 6 and 2 after they lost to uh, EPC 21 to 10, who is ranked number eight in our 2A poll, but number five in the AP poll. All right, moving into Class 2A. At number one, I have GCMS. At number two, I have Moreau Forsyth. At number three are the Orient Chargers. At number four, St. Teresa. At number five, I have Sterling Newman. Uh, number six, Chicago Hope. At number seven, I have EPC. At number eight, I have Carthage Alina West. At number nine, Pena. And rounding out my top ten is Nashville. Nice, Kyle. Uh, same top ten, just different orders. GCMS, number one. Number two, Moreau Forsyth. Three, Orient. Number four, Sterling Newman. St. Teresa, five. Chicago Hope, six. Carthage Line, Iowa 7, EPC 8, Pena 9, and Nashville at 10. Very good. So our Class 2A panel is going to be pretty, pretty close to what we both just listed. Number 1, GCMS at 8 No, after they beat El Paso Gridley 63-6. At number 2, we have Moreau Forsyth. 8 No, after they beat Riverton 77 to nothing. 
And yes, like we stated, we could see this being a potential state championship rematch. Don't worry. Bro, no, of course people I, already got all butt hurt about that. Yeah, story. you saw I that. Saw that. Yeah. Good. I read it. Yeah. Merle Forsyth did the right thing there. What did want? Knee the ball? Yeah, exactly. What, what's more embarrassing? Uh, anyway, number three, Orion. 8 0 after they beat Bureau Valley, 57 0. At number four, we have St. Teresa at 8 0 after they beat Warrensburg Latham, who is ranked number 12 in our yeah. 1A poll, 62 to 12. Yeah, St. Teresa's real deal, folks. I mean, you got to pay attention to them. Jacardi, is a, Jacardi is a beast, and given the right run in the playoffs, he could become Illinois' all time leading rusher. So that's something to watch out for yeah. as well. Uh, yeah, he probably already have broke Robinson's record had he played in most of the games this year. Uh, that's true. I mean, how many times is he sitting before halftime? Uh, let's see. Number five, Sterling Newman. They are seven and one after they beat Fulton forty-seven to twelve. At number six, Chicago Hope is six and two after they beat Westchester St. Joseph forty-eight to eight. Number seven is Carthage Liner West as they improved to eight zero with their win over Rushville fifty-four to fourteen. Number eight is EPC at eight zero after they beat Dakota twenty-one to ten, who is ranked number ten in our class one A poll. And number nine, Pena is seven and one with their win over Litchfield. 46 to nothing, rounding out our top 10 is Nashville at 7 and 1 after they beat number 10, 3A ranked DuCoin, 29 to 20. All right, our NUIC Power 5. Shane, we had some good games here, like we stated. Obviously, the big one to impact the Power 5 was EPC and Dakota, and I don't think it's going to have much of a change, at least it did not for me. And number one, I stay with the EPC Wildcats as they improved to 8-0, winning the Northwest Conference title. Number two is Lena Winslow. They are 7-1. and one. At number three is Milledgeville, 8-0. They have the chance to sew up the Upstate Conference title this week. Forrest is my number four as they come in with a 6-2 and two mark. And rounding out my power five is Dakota at 6-2. Close loss to UPC. Very nice, Kyle. Um, I did shift mine, so I'm going to make a few people mad. Uh, you can email your complaints to Shane at I don't care com. My number one team would be Lena Winslow, followed by EPC at two. Uh, I flipped those two, and I also flipped these next two fours and three, Milledgeville fours, and still in my top five is the Dakota Indians. Very good, Shane. I actually I, I like it. I like it a lot, to be honest. Um, Carrie's Power 5 at number 1. She has still stuck with Lena Winslow. Number 2 is EPC. Number 3 is Milledgeville. Number 4 is Forreston. And number 5 is Dakota. So, as you can see, yeah. we all have the same 5 picks. So, our panel Power 5 is going to break down as such. At number 1 are the Lena Winslow Panthers. Regaining that number 1 spot, most likely due to the Fact to the fact team that, conference. yeah, <laughs> best team conference, EPC kind of laid their neck last week against Dakota. Do not expect that from Lena Winslow this week. Number two, EPC. Number three is Milledgeville. Number four is Forest, and number five is Dakota. So that gives you a look at where we see the Class 1A, Class 2A state rankings along with our NUIC Power 5. Once again, lots of big games this week. Yeah. Uh, as we head into Selection Saturday, great time of the year. Uh, just so much to look forward to this week because there's matchups that can change a lot of the landscape that we look at. Um, in our previous video, we stated we feel 95% accurate with how we have things planned to this point. We're fairly confident in the 32 teams that we have picked to represent Class 1A and Class 2A. Yeah. Um, regard, I mean, obviously an upset here or there could definitely shake that up just a tad, but we're not going to be too far off as who's qualified. No. And, uh, I mean, you pretty much hit every point. Not much left for me to say. Uh, just season's really going by fast. A little hard to believe we're already sitting here, you know, a week before the playoffs. So, I mean, we're going to have two shows in the same week. Yeah, definitely. Well, and technically three, so I mean, by the time we get the scenes and break them all down, so definitely a 
fun time of the year. It's definitely a busy week for NUICFF this week, that's for sure, which makes it a lot of fun. It means we're getting into the best five weeks of the season. Um, but, I mean, you take a look at some of the things we got going on. Definitely, you know, Lena Winslow and Aurora Christian are definitely going to be the teams to watch in Class 1A from what I see in the north. In the south, you got uh, Argenta Oriana. You have... Um, Camp Point Central, Concord, Triopia, you know. Yeah. We'll see. One of those three teams has a very good shot of making it to Champagne. Sure. Well. I mean, all, the, all of them are good. So. Yeah. As far as 2A, 2A is where it's at this year. I, you know, I was watching a, a podcast the other day. Somebody said that 4A, they thought 4A was the toughest. And uh, to be honest, I see 4A as I see. And Rochester. So, so to me, a, that doesn't collision. make it very tough. So it's a collision, of course. Um, there are some good teams in 4A, don't get me wrong, but 2A is where the most unpredictability is going yeah. to be with Moreau, Forsyth, Chicago Hope, Orion, Sterling Newman, St. Teresa, Tuscola. It's going to be Athens. hard for me to win my. to do my three feet in the bracket challenge. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, it really is. Yeah. I do see, as far as favorites in the North, you know, I, I definitely think GCMS is definitely going to be a favorite in the North, and uh, along with Chicago Hope. And in the South, you you got to go with Moreau of Foresight. I mean, shit, they've well, been I, there several times in the last nine years. Yeah. And then, you know, I would say right now St. Teresa is the one that you're looking at as far as who can get to where, yeah. you know. But, I mean, even in the north outside of that, I mean, you still have Sterling Newman, who's always tough. Oh, Newman's always um, tough. Always there. Orion, you know, Orion's they might there. be down Lee, but still a great team. Yeah, they're very good. So, very uh, good. So, a lot to look forward to, yeah. as you said. Uh, don't forget, we're going to be doing our YouTube Live uh, on Selection Saturday, where we'll have our playoff show. We'll go through our probable matchups, and then we'll break down what the actual matchups are once they're released. That show will begin at 7.30. We'll get the links up on our social media media pages, both on Facebook and on Twitter as well. That way you can just click on the link. Or you can subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel just by clicking on the button right below us, and uh, then you'll be notified as soon as we do go live. Anyway, as always... Root for the NUIC.